Hi, good morning everyone. Today I want to talk about water retention. <clears throat> this is a problem that plagues millions of people across the world, especially women. And a lot of women mistake being fat when they actually, they think they're fat, but they're actually just bloated and their bodies are retaining a lot of water. So what exactly is water retention and why does the human body retain water in the first place? When clients come to me, they say, I have a lot of abdominal fat and it's there in the morning and sometimes I have a flat stomach by afternoon and then by night my stomach's bloated again and then they think they're fat so they start going on these crazy diets and punishing their bodies with exercise where that's not really the problem you're not really fat your body's just retaining water at that particular point so number one what we need to understand is that almost 85 to 90 percent of your body is water and now what balances the amount of water that our cells need or that our body needs? And we're going to understand that today. Water retention is also called fluid retention. And this happens in the circulatory system. It happens in your body tissues or it happens in body cavities. Now, there are a certain amount of conditions that cause water retention. Number one being a cirrhotic liver. I always stress on the importance of having a healthy, clean liver because the more toxic and the more sluggish your liver is, the more water your body retains. And today, so many people suffer from a fatty liver and a non-alcoholic fatty liver. Usually, liver cirrhosis was linked to people who drink a lot of alcohol and smoke and eat a lot of junk food. But today, you have pure vegetarians, you have Jains, you have people who don't consume alcohol who have fatty livers as well. That's usually due to poor lifestyle, the high intake of sugar, over excessive eating of fruits and so many other issues including a sedentary lifestyle. But the cleaner you keep your liver and the healthier you keep your liver, the less chances of water retention you have. Then you have heart and kidney health as well. As your heart health deteriorates or as your kidney health deteriorates, your body starts retaining more water. You need to think of your kidney as a pump. Your kidney has the job of balancing your fluid and your water intake, including your sodium and potassium. So if there is a problem with your kidney, your kidney is such an important organ. And most people go into kidney failure with the least amount of symptoms, which is why you never take your kidney for granted. You keep improving your kidney health. And I'm going to talk about that for a bit today because... Most people reach 90% kidney failure and then the body starts throwing up symptoms. And usually your only treatment post that is dialysis. And that really changes your lifestyle. So you want to focus on your kidney health because if you have a poor functioning kidney, you have your body will retain water. Then you have your uh, premenstrual syndrome. Women going through their periods. At the start of their period, they tend to retain water or bloat up. Now this is an important time for a woman. And many women will, just resting at that point will really help them recover because you need to understand that there's a hormonal change. Your estrogen levels are going up and your progesterone levels are going down, which means your body will retain certain amount of water. Also, what's happening is you may suffer from mild acidity because there's a, dec a decrease in the production of bile. So at that time, many women may choose to continue exercising Many women will find that resting at that point will help the hormonal balance happen more effectively. So rest becomes extremely important. And yes, I am going to end this video with natural remedies that you can use to flush out water from your system. Lifestyle. One of the main reasons why men and women retain water. When you're sitting in one place for too long, when you have a sedentary lifestyle, you slow down circulation. Your body starts retaining water, which is why daily activity is so important. Not just your one-hour workout in the gym, but how active are you throughout the day? Can you get 10,000 steps on your band or your phone? Because that's a benchmark of you being active throughout the day. So whether you're taking your phone call, standing up, believe me, you get a lot of steps when you're talking on the phone and walking up and down, you know, standing up during your meetings, getting up every 45 minutes if you have a desk job, going and getting yourself a cup of water, stretching, touching your toes. It could be just two minutes to get circulation flowing. But when you have more circulation, you have less water retention. It's people who sit, and you can see this in senior citizens. Some of them, they cannot move too often, and you'll see immediately how water starts retaining in their lower bodies, especially in their foot, their legs, and their thighs. And when they start moving around, even assisted movement, you'll see that the water starts draining out. 
because the human body is like a natural pump. Circulation basically moves blood and oxygen, and blood consists of 90% water. So it acts like a natural drainage system, like your lymphatic system as well, which is why in diseases like cancer and any disease that is life-threatening, movement becomes so important, even if it's a little bit, because you've got to keep circulation going. You've got to keep the kidney, which is a natural pump, functioning. That's so important. Medicines. Most people only look at lifestyle, but you have to look at the amount of medication you're on. Many, many medications have the side effect of water retention. Most chemotherapy drugs, most beta blockers, most antidepressants, most blood pressure medications, and yes, most of your NSAIDs, which is your non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs that we keep popping like candy. Now, all these medications and treatments that I mentioned may be necessary for you, and you should take it. But you should also understand that's why it's so important to change your lifestyle and the way you eat and the way you move, especially when you're on your medication. Because one of the side effects of these medications are water retention. And then you can go on fat dieting and you can go on beating up your body with exercise. But no, what you should be looking at is working with your doctor to say that, hey, doc, okay, I understand. I need to be on this medicine right now, but I want to work with you to eventually get off this medication. I will change the way I eat. I'll change the way I live, the way I think, the way I sleep, the way I move. But I want to work on tapering off these medications because the side effects of these medications are destroying me eventually. So we have to understand that popping medication as a quick fix is not the only answer. It is designed to make you feel better. It is designed to make your medical parameters look better on your report. But it comes at a cost. It comes at a compromise of your own health. So whatever medication that you may be on today, blood pressure medication, you can't just get off it. You can't just stop it. You can't decide to get off it without your doctor knowing. But you should know that whatever attempts you make to change your lifestyle, to reduce your blood pressure normally will help your doctor make that decision to reduce your medication. And you'll see that your water retention and the side effects that those medications cause slowly get lesser and lesser. And we have hormones like I spoke. A lot of women and men go to hormonal changes. Women more often because of the lack of sleep, where your hormonal balance doesn't get complete at night. Junk food, stress, emotional stress, emotional internalization, moving from one thing to another. This creates a hormonal imbalance. Again, high estrogen, low progesterone, water retention. We need to understand that the human body requires sodium. And that's where we're coming to the lifestyle changes required. Your body requires sodium because sodium has a function of binding onto water, retaining water in your cells and outside of your cells for bodily functions. You need water in your body, especially if it's, if it's 80 to 90% water and your blood is 90% water. So your sodium in your food and sodium in your body binds onto water and maintains that level that your body actually needs. Now the problem is when we have more sodium in our diet, Every extra gram of sodium in your body that your body doesn't require, the body retains that water. That's what sodium is designed for. So you'll notice that you don't suffer from too much of bloating when you eat your own home-cooked food. But the moment you start eating restaurant food or food from outside where people don't care about the amount of salt that goes in because we all understand that salt makes the food more tasty. And to sell food, you've got to sell taste or people are not going to eat it. Every extra gram of sodium in your body will make you retain water. So when you're eating all of that outside food, which definitely has more than one teaspoon of salt, which, is, which should actually be your daily intake of salt, 2,300 milligrams, which is equivalent to almost a teaspoon of salt, you can have one outside meal and get more salt than your daily requirement. And that's when our body starts retaining more water, which is why we feel bloated or we have this late night dinner in a restaurant or at a party and we wake up with a puffy face and water retention and we feel heavy, lethargic and acidic. Now, what are the ways that we can naturally reduce water retention? Number one, reducing the sodium in your diet. Do not go salt free. Salt free is detrimental to your health. A lot of dietitians and nutritionists will put you on a salt-free diet, but that can actually put you into terrible situations with your organs because you require sodium for electrolyte balance in the human body in the right proportion. So a lot of people with high blood pressure decide to go on salt-free diets. Please do not do that. You'll be doing more harm. Balance the amount of sodium in your diet. Another important mineral to reduce water retention is magnesium. 
We've spoken about this powerful mineral which has over 300 to 500 functions, enzymatic functions in the human body. You find magnesium in your nuts like your almonds, your walnuts, your bananas, your whole grains and even dark chocolate. And the more magnesium you have within the right range in your body, the less sodium you have. So if you have too much of sodium in your system, magnesium can actually balance that. For women going through the period cycle, a very important vitamin is vitamin B6. This is found in bananas, this is found in potatoes, this is found in walnuts. Because like I mentioned, pre-menses, your estrogen goes up and your progesterone comes down. B6 balances that. So you can be, get B6 in a normal B-complex vitamin that your doctor may prescribe for you, or just eating a diet that's rich in banana, uh, walnuts, Potatoes, that should give you sufficient B6 to balance the bloating during your period cycle. Also, the mixture of jaggery, PO jaggery and black sesame seeds is known to reduce bloating, especially before your period, and also reduce the period cramping. It's excellent. The combination of jaggery and black sesame seeds, again, that's from traditional India, where your mother probably made these little laddus of jaggery and sesame seeds with a little bit of ghee or coconut oil, and that prevented bloating and that gave you uh, cramping relief. You can pop all the cyclopams that, the cyclopams that you want, but again, that's doing damage to your gut. Quick relief, but damage to your gut. Potassium. We need to eat a diet rich in potassium if we have too much of sodium in our body because potassium balances the sodium levels in our body. And where do we find potassium? Bananas, tomatoes, avocados, nuts, seeds, natural foods. But again, check with your doctor because sometimes if you have high potassium levels and low sodium, that needs to be balanced naturally. Okay? And refined carbs. When you eat your refined carbs, all of your processed carbs, guess what happens? You spike up your blood sugar levels. Then your body got to produce more insulin. Now you have high insulin. When you have high insulin, guess what happens? It retains sodium. Your body retains sodium, which explains why after, after having that processed white cheese, white sauce, pasta, you tend to feel bloated up because that's a white refined carb. It shot your sugar levels up, your body produced more insulin, and now your body gets into a process of retaining sodium, which means retaining water. Refined carbs increase sodium in the body, which increases the way that your body retains water. So what are the quick remedies? Move more. Do not sit in one place for a long time. Get that magic number of nine to 10,000 steps in a day and I can promise you it will change your life even if you've not worked out for one hour a day. But you're getting that 10,000 steps a day. It means you're active. It means you have better control over water retention. Drink water. Okay, a lot of people think that, oh, I'm retaining water, so let me decrease my intake of water. It is so important that you understand that if you have low water intake, guess what? Your body is going to retain the little water that it has because it's not getting water from an external source. So if you cut down on water, you're going to feel bloated. Try this out. Don't drink water for a couple of hours and you'll see that you start bloating up because your body retains the little water that it has because it needs to maintain that water level in your body. Quick remedies, parsley and coriander. Take about 250 grams of co coriander, 250 grams of parsley, and keep boiling this in water. Strain it, you have a yellowish liquid. Drink that, flushes out water from your system. Again, check with your doctor because you need to know your sodium and potassium levels for this. Fennel, your soft. This is the simplest way. Take a tablespoon of soft and a teaspoon of ajwine, which is also called bishop's weed, and soft is called fennel in English. You boil this in four cups of water, reduce it to two, and you drink it. It works like a natural diuretic, flushing out water from your system. Bali. Buy pearl barley, boil about three tablespoons in three cups of water, reduce it to half, squeeze in a little bit of fresh lemon, and you have a natural diuretic that can flush out water from your system. Let me see if I have any points left. These are the quickest remedies. Diuretics are available easily in the market, but if you misuse diuretics like Lasix, a lot of women out there, before going out for parties and weddings, they pop in Lasixes so that it flushes out water from their system and they look less bloated and their abdominal and their stomachs get flatter. Let me tell you, that is the most dangerous thing that you can do because the Lasix is designed to work into your, get into your kidney and you have these little loops 
it blocks these loops from producing potassium so that your sodium gets lower and you don't retain water and you flush water out of your system. Now, a lot of people need elastics for medical conditions, but you have to understand it will destroy your kidney over time. So these are natural diuretics, the fennel, the sof, the ajwine, your parsley, your coriander, movement, drinking the right amount of water, managing your periods the right way before and after. You do these things eating the right way. Remember, overeating will make you bloat up because if you're overeating, you're eating more than your body requires and that food has salt. So you're also overeating salt, which automatically makes you retain water. It all comes down to that one drug, which is inexpensive and practically free. It's called lifestyle. Have a good day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.